Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And the question of today is, what are the new advances in stroke rehabilitation? And so stroke is a very common uh, disease, very common problem um, now, now today. We have some of the leading causes of death are heart disease and cancer followed by stroke. And there are a lot of people who get strokes that are still able to function after them. They're not completely debilitating, but they either have a um, loss of sensation or they have something like loss of motor function where they can't move an arm or leg or part of their face. And a lot of times what most physical therapists are going to do is work on these, these outcome measures. And so basically improve walking ability or improve ability to put on a shirt or to reach and grab something and be more, um, and working with the ADLs or activities of daily living and improving them. And a lot of times this works um, because we're retraining the brain, right? A stroke is a problem in a specific part of the brain. The, um, there is a blood vessel that gets either clogged or clotted, um, and then therefore you have lack of oxygen and nutrients to that part of the brain, and the brain, that part of the brain starts to uh, die or deteriorate. Um, or you can have a hemorrhagic stroke in which there is a opening of the blood vessel and now blood is leaking out into the brain, which shouldn't be happening. Uh, both of these can cause um, severe damage, um, especially if it's not taken care of fast enough, which is why a stroke is a, an emergency situation. Um, after the stroke, now the inflammation dies down and there is just some deficits or is there, there was basically a traumatic brain injury um, or a um, problem, a damage, an injury to the areas in the brain where the stroke or the blood vessels were supplying. And from there, we need to do specific brain rehab for those areas. Um, if we're trying to work on areas that are already dead or not working as well, then sometimes that's too much for the brain and there's never going to be um, rehab. And so the, the working on the ADLs and, and typical physical therapy is good, but sometimes you need to do other things in order to um, improve objective measures, um, like decreasing spasticity or um, improving just the ability for you to sense vibration or to sense um, a pinprick. And that's important because that's how the brain understands where an arm or leg is in space to then be able to move it properly. So I wanted today to talk about some of the new advances in, uh, in physical therapy and in rehab for stroke rehab. And there, there's a lot of them and it's pretty cool. Um, and so we're just going to talk about like three papers. Then I want to show you a couple of clips of one of my patients. So let's get right to it. So the first part is adding um, electrical stimulation to standard rehab in stroke. And so this paper is um, called Adding Electrical Stimulation During Standard Rehab. They're all systemat uh, systematic reviews that we're going to talk about. It's from 2017. And basically, here right in the abstract, it says, like, sensory input improves motor function, kind of what I was just saying. If you don't have good sensory input, then motor function is not going to have um, pr proper output. And so they can be added to active training during neurological injuries. Um, and so the objective was to look at adding electrical stimulation during, um, with or without, or without motor recruitment before you do a, a rehab routine. Um, and this is with a, a hemiparesis, which is basically a one-sided problem where you can't move the left arm and the left leg following a stroke. And so they used a TENS unit or a transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation um, or a peripheral electromyography. So basically um, just activating the muscles in that area. They also used acupuncture um, to produce sensory effects without, again, motor recruitment. So it's basically doing something without having the patient try to move that muscle that they're stimulating. 
Um, so then what happened? So those were the results. So electrical sensory inputs when paired with the routine therapy improved peak torque dorsiflexion. So this was in, um, we we're looking specifically at the lower extremity. Um, and then when combined therapy, that yielded a significant difference in the terms of sensory stimulation without motor recruitment only on the time to go test um, in the chronic phase. So basically improved outcome measures of being able to walk, walk down and walk back. Um, the, the spasticity score, so the, the tightness in the leg was reduced, but it was not reduced significantly by adding, by, by, by doing this additional electrical stimulation. Um, so electrical sensory input can contribute to routine rehab to improve early post-stroke lower extremity impairment. This is important because we know that um, improving or adding this other therapy can just make one more layer um, of improvement. Now, if we add this therapy and also do maybe mirror therapy with it, we can have more benefits. So this is a uh, Cochrane study, which is basically a really high-end journal that does the systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And they looked at so mirror therapy for improving motor function after a stroke. There's this huge review. Um, let's see if I have a date right there. It was from 2018. And let's go right to the abstract again. And so, again, mirror therapy is used to improve motor function after a stroke. And so mirror therapy, I'll show you kind of what it looks like. But generally, it's like if something is wrong with my left arm, I'm going to have the mirror cutting my body in half here. where the patient cannot see or I cannot see my left arm, but then I'm going to move my right arm in order to see my left arm, my left fake arm in the mirror moving. And that teaches the brain, the visual system like, hey, I am allowed to move this or I'm able to move this so that we can start training neurons there to eventually be able to move um, that arm. And so they looked at the effectiveness of mirror therapy compared with no treatment. Um, and there was many studies, there were 57 studies, randomized controlled trials, five randomized crossover trials, and they found there was moderate quality evidence that mirror therapy had a significant positive effect on motor function following strokes. They also showed that mirror therapy may improve activities of daily living. So again, like putting on a shirt, being able to walk to the bathroom, those kind of things. Um, there was low quality evidence on the significant effect on pain, but there was still an effect. It was just low quality evidence. So again, effectiveness of mirror therapy for improving upper extremity, motor function, motor impairment, activity of daily living, and pain, um, at least as an adjunct to conventional rehab for people after stroke. So again, conventional rehab is working on walking, working on putting on a shirt, um, doing typical physical therapy that's going to try to activate the muscle. Again, they're trying to activate the muscle. They're trying to use neurons in the brain that are trying that are going to connect to those muscles. This instead, we're talking about electrical stimulation, mirror therapy that are using other systems in the brain. We're using sensory systems and we're using visual systems with mirror therapy. And then so finally, let's talk about one more paper and that's uh, virtual reality. So this is a 2015 paper looking at rehabilitation that incorporates virtual reality is more effective than standard rehab for improving walking speed, balance, and mobility after stroke. So again, this was looking more at walking speed. It was looking at um, a lower extremity effect. And so when using virtual reality, um, so when virtual reality was replaced, some or all of the standard rehabilitation, there was statistically significant benefits in walking speed, balance, and mobility. So that's when we basically said, we're not gonna use standard rehab, we're just gonna use virtual reality and all of these improve, which is pretty cool. Then when virtual reality um, was added to the standard rehab, mobility also showed a significant benefit. Um, so in conclusion, substituting some or all of the standard rehab regimen with virtual reality will elicit greater benefits in walking speed, balance, mobility in people following a stroke. Um, so this is pretty cool. We have now new modern technology, we have virtual reality, we have Mirror therapy has kind of always been used, but we can use virtual reality and mirror therapy together. And then we can add electrical stimulation, um, all to improve um, function in an arm or a leg following a stroke. So now I just wanna show you a video of one of my patients here. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. 
So hopefully this is still sharing. And this is one of my patients. She's a 36 year old who had a hemorrhagic stroke, has basically no function in her left side, left arm and leg. So here we're doing mirror therapy where she is moving her right hand, her fist open and closed. And she has goggles on to see her left hand in the mirror. And that left hand is, she can see opening and closing. And at the same time, we're giving some electrical stimulation to her left hand. You can see her thumb moving there. And that electrical stimulation to that median nerve is working on the sensory modality on that left side, while the mirror therapy is working on the visual system. There. Um, Hopefully I can show one more here. And so here we're just converging therapies. By converging therapies, um, we are able to improve function. Start over. So again, kind of the same thing. Sorry, it's a little glitchy. So again, using the electrical stimulation, she is moving her hand up and down as a ball is hitting her hand. Okay, so she's supinating and pronating while the ball is hitting her hand. And she is looking at the left hand in the virtual reality, and, but she's moving her right. So again, we're working on these mirror neurons to help better function, um, to help better show and improve function on that left side um, by activating different areas in the brain for sensory um, and visual system modalities. So I hope you found this one interesting. Um, I hope it was beneficial for people. I know there's a lot of people have either been um, affected by strokes or know people that have been affected by strokes. Um, we know strokes not only affect the, the patient or the person, but also the caregivers. And so um, this is some really beneficial treatment that can help those, those patients recover better and not need caregivers and get back to normal daily life. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thank you for tuning in today and have a great day. Stay healthy.